Let's see what this guy has. An air then. Not the goal. A lot of Vault Hunt units. Uh, I don't want any consumers first round. Oh, sure. This is okay. I just start with that. <clears throat> the only other alternative is starting with the Necker Warrior first. But I just really wanna show dominance here. Um If this guy gets hit, it doesn't really matter. Hopefully he gets hit. No, no such luck. Put Drowners, please. Come on! This is my deck. No Drowners for us. Guys, give this version a chance. This is the version I built, and I had Drowners in it, and I kicked them out. Not a fan of uh, running Forktail. You really hate that card. I was a fan of it when he when the card was stupidly OP, but right now it's not stupidly OP, so I don't run it. I think it used to be a a five for five that uh, did, dealt five that <laughs> one damage to everything. Five for five that dealt five damage to the enemy. I would run that card. But no, 5 for 5 uh, that uh, dealt 1 damage to the enemy. But now it's a, a 4 for 6 that deals 1 damage to everything. So, no, I don't think so. Forktail is still really strong. I don't like it that much. I'm a little bit surprised that he has a Harpy Egg. I'm just destroying everything he plays. Oh my god. Come on, play on the first row, man! Oh, I can't play the Vought Hunt Warriors. What is this? I don't wanna play the Vivus Incantation with the old Spear Tip right now. <clears throat> What deck is that? I don't know. He's just hiding in the back. Oh, come on. Everybody has that. But now I can finally play my Vatan Warrior. I found this is enough. There is no escape. Sure, let's do that. It's a Slizard list or Montard list. Okay. But those descriptions don't really tell me that much. I would just I would just think there is no reason to run Eradin unless you try to cheese long round with some um, um, Yennefer Conjurer or Imbralet. Um, that goes. Goal is pretty good. Keep for later. Oh yeah, I would like riders. That's pretty decent. Riders, really good. So, uh, we're gonna start with the Knackers. I'm still adjusting this microphone a little bit. Ok, 
okay. By the way, I have like a proper arm now. Not not like somebody's actually handing the microphone to me with an arm, but like a proper microphone arm. I think the f former one would be actually cooler. Just someone handing me the microphone all the time. It would feel like I'm on a bloody interview all the time. Do any of you uh, sign up for that job? <clears throat> anyway, uh, so more professional setup. Just because I, I couldn't fit it on my table properly. 2-0? That's what you guys want or that's what you guys uh, believe is gonna happen? Oh, that was actually pretty good. Uh, wait to shut down the neckers. Um... Yeah, I don't want to draw into a rider. That uh, drag cutting off someone's arm to help with the streaming. I mean, his dedication. Yeah, I don't want to cut down anyone's arm. I just, I just want a slave who holds the microphone for me. What's so wrong with that? Uh, I don't like that. The the reason he's probably gonna get punished here is that he just wants to hold back. Wait. Yeah, he, he just wants to hold back for round three. And by the time he realizes that he should have committed to this round, it's gonna be way too damn late. So we can just play some fives. Some eleven. Maybe we're gonna do that. Does he have some kind of row buff? Because he's really putting everything in the range row. And he's probably right. It looks a bit odd, but I don't think he should expect me to have any row effects to punish him. And I definitely have uh, some uh, Vault Hunt Warriors that he might be able to dodge with this, strat with this approach. Basically, I'm just super aggro. Like, hey, come over here in the first row! And he's like, no, please! Stay back! What is your opinion of the crones? I think they are strong, but too expensive and hard to fit in big boys. I don't think they make sense in the deck unless you want consume. And... I don't think he has a Scorch. And, uh... If you want consume, holy shit, you really want them. Because they offer you damage, boost, and consume. And the and it might be and it's 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 not really justifiable unless you care about consume. But I actually built a consume deck that has no common consumers in it, only has Kaeron and the fuck, I don't know. The the crone that also acts as a Kaeron. When you play the other crones. And if you have resurrects in there as well, then you have nine consumes in three cards. Of course you can try to play the the common card that consumes every round, but that's a bit risky to play. <clears throat> no scorchy please. Oh, now go far. Like, you can consume two allies. What's the flipping point, right? Okay, he ended up having the highest unit, but what's the flipping point, right? So he has to get, go get nine points. And I think at this point we're just gonna say, like, yeah, good luck with that. I'm not gonna push all the way. They also offer carryover? A word. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I think the crones are good, 
if you want consume, you want them. If you don't want consume, I think it's hard to uh, justify them. Partially because sometimes you're only gonna get two. And, uh, and that's not great. Actually, having not go far would be pretty bad. But I got a chance. Another goal, right? Mm, not necessarily. That's so bad. I can't have a Nuggle far. That's just that's just useless. But this is near useless. Oh, this is so bad. All right, fine. All right. He has no way to sh uh, to shut down my hero power. Oh, crap! Oh, that's what you meant! Born. <laughs> Fuck, I didn't even realize uh, that you meant the Morn Tart by the description Morn Tart. <laughs> Fuck. I get it now. Uh, funnily enough, this is my first time of seeing this strategy. <laughs> this is not a common one, I have to say. Does he even have enough units here to justify it? Oh, this is probably the reason he's using the Harpies. No, 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 the Harpies are doomed. But the Neckers are not. Yeah, I don't like this card. Unless, I guess I guess if you can make it immune, it's good. Goodish. But the hero power is worth like 8 to 10 points. Just to guarantee this unit that I'm not exactly sure how much it costs, but it doesn't seem like it's worth it. Twenty-three points. Yeah, I mean, this is just look at this. Twenty-one points. Twenty-three points. How do you feel about this, Aradim? I would make a good slave. Well, fuck you. I have uh, something to say about that. Hurry up. How about that? What? No, no description for this. You're going down. What the fuck? <laughs> This guy needs to open his mouth. How could I smack off my opponent? If I, all I can do is like... Mmm. I have to say, Dagon, I'm a little bit disappointed in you. This was a excellent opportunity for some grade A smack talk. And you, you missed your chance big time. Alright. Oh my god, I hate these guys. Is it just me or just... I, I hate the usurpers. Fucking hell. Also, we need the mulligan. In a way, we have a chance. These are not too bad. Ah, come on. So, this is not a not a good hand for round one. Nago Far can find a lot of things. None of them will break me. But some of them are somewhat uh, uh, like luster. The idea is to out tempo your opponent round one and then bleed round two onto a few cards. It has uh, fallen out of meta because Rise of Shoop, you can randomly snipe it. Yeah, so you're saying that it's uh, it's very similar to how the woodland plays. 
Because that's how the Woodland plays. You out-tempo your opponent round 1, bleed round 2, then you slam cards. It has a very similar playstyle to the Woodland. Uh, we're gonna go Vault on Hound. Oh, that's a good target as well. But the Magnet Division is the one that has to go down. Hmm. Good bloody question, what to play. So either I play the Necker Warrior, or we spin the roulette wheel with Nagelfar. I don't know. I think we're just gonna play the Necker Warrior for now. Also playing uh, Vault Hunt units in the front is a good idea. Currently I can I already can play this for 5, then this for 6. That's not particularly impressive, but it's something. I go far, please. Interesting. So we gotta have this guy on the board. I tend to try to avoid that. It's it's okay, but it's not the best. <clears throat> But yeah, Woodland has just more points. I really don't like the Hag, because you have to make it immune, or you have to pray to the to all the gods, so it doesn't die. When you make it immune, it's probably not gonna die. But, and when you play Erden, you probably wanna go... I just feel like there's a lot better use for that... for that uh, ability than... Uh, then, then, then just saving it for the hag. You, you can just uh, play it on Yennefer Conjurer. That's not always the best. Or Imbralet. That, that can be very powerful. But they all have their weaknesses. Because they both have, more importantly, the same weakness. If your opponent has one big guy and you can't take it down. Then you can shoot with Imbralet. That's bad. Or you end up... Only shooting that with Jennifer Conjurer. I prefer Jennifer Conjurer, obviously, because it's less likely to get, to get completely shut down. Resistance is futile. Oh, we can buff this. Ah, uh, maybe I should have sh shot his big dude. Okay, he really wants to get it over to his side. Yeah. You need to lower it to. Well, I don't know. It needs to hit my Ash Giant as well at this point. This could hurt. You run a lot of immune units in your Woodland deck for that very reason. What? Actually, I don't run. Well, you guys can see this, but I don't run any immune. I used to run the Awful Werewolf. Because uh, that has a, had, had that a double purpose. Not only you can uh, you you well you had a okay tribe unit. Plus you had this immune guy, but I felt like ultimately he was uh, not needed. I have to keep playing. Question is, does he the Empire will be keep playing here? 
Oh my god, really? Fuck me. <laughs> we are screwed. And this is where my dilemma is. This is my the this is my problem. Is that in order to win round one, your best bet is actually a long round deck. So uh well we kind of have that, but this is kind of a finisher deck. That's obviously our goal. And he beat us. He beat us hard here. I would need to play 7 here. And keep in mind, we are... We used the... We, we already done one card. So, we're fucked here. We are really screwed. Of course, I kind of got unlucky. I usually have better cards, or... Could have better cards. But the point is, you can win round one with a long round strategy. And when you do that, you can pass round two. And you can have another long round strategy at round three. And that's a huge problem, in my opinion. Gwent used to have two draws round two and one draw uh, round three. That was pretty good, because now... If I lost that one with my short round strategy deck, then what would we have? That would be, actually this is how many cards we would have round 3. You can be successful, you, you can't really pull this off. You can't have a like a, well you can try to have a, a round 3 with uh, with 4 cards as a, as, a, as a long round strategy, but it's probably gonna fail. But right now he's gonna have 7 cards. And I'm gonna be in a tough spot. He will rot to serve you round three. Well, we got unlucky. Like, we had a bad starting hand. He disables our hero power. Not sure what to do here. This is probably less valuable than the Necker, unless he somehow kills the Necker. Yeah, and of, of course, every single uh, Nilfgaard has Peter in the deck, because uh, they made that card, like, st stupidly out to include. So, expect that. I don't like going against Nilfgaard. Oh, actually, hmm, we might keep all of that. Yeah, we def we're keeping all of that, o unless we're struggling to have enough units to eat. But no, that's that's just okay. That's fine. Let's keep all of that. And I think we're gonna start with Imbralit, follow it up with Necker. I don't know where Goliath is gonna fit in, but then of course we're just gonna play a bunch of uh, uh, consumers. At least he can't triple horn you. It's Freddy Babe's list. This is what he does. Tells these guys like this guy called Diplomat. You can't even spell Diplomat to, to play Nilfgaard against me. Freddy, why are you doing this, man? God damn it. Freddy. Why? He also plays Skellen and Royal Decree. Why does he have Freddy's list? Can he be, be his own man? Is it just me? Well, this is really hard to uh, tell, but I have the feeling that in the new Gwent, more people are net decking than the old Gwent. And this is basically like the change of almost everyone net decking to everyone net decking. I know you, you do. Well, welcome back. We got locked.
In my opinion, Freddy Babe's lists are not that great. He plays in a very unique way. <clears throat> well, I, I don't know. I don't really follow anybody's list. Uh, I only saw him in tournaments, and I enjoyed his uh, strategies, although some of them were really half-baked. Uh, they were a little bit hit and miss, and uh, kind of relying on their um, surprise factor. But that's bad. But that's also bad because uh, sometimes, well, peop people are just gonna find out what, what your deck is uh, later, unless, unless all the matches play... Uh, on the same day, but that's not gonna happen. He still, he still managed all my, still managed to just win, win the tournaments with uh, seemingly uh, lackluster decks. So I'm not sure what to say about him. I still have to worship him as as the god he is. He just brought some crap deck that I said like, hey, that deck like, fuck me, give me Gervin is too good. Is it just me? No, 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 it's fucking not me. Gippy Gervin is too good. Look at this guy. He costs 8. Like many units in the game, faction units, they, they give you 7 points for 8. And that's kind of the price. Or maybe even less. They give you uh, like 6 power faction units, give you 5 points for 6. Or maybe 5 power faction units give you 4 power for, for 5. And this guy gives you 7 power for 8 baseline. But also can be completely ridiculous. So what the fuck game? It's not cool. Why is he so strong? But yeah, we're gonna get shot down because Peter is an auto include. And he's just ridiculously strong. Sometimes I've had enough. <sighs> Guess what's gonna happen? So the big ghoul is gonna get locked, or I mean reset. Oh yeah, of course, because that's completely cool. But the old Grant said, "Nah, that's not okay." You know, playing cards are that the enemy can't interact with. If this is all Grant, then it would be in... You know what? This only works if the opponent didn't pass. You know what? And even then, I probably would have been uh, shut down by that. But still. Playing after pass? What the fuck? <laughs> Whatever, diplomat guy, you got me good. And even then, even right, even like this, uh, we all lost by three points. So, not that bad. And he didn't have Peter? That's a little bit surprising. He probably didn't draw into it. Well done. Gypsy's broken? God damn it, right. <laughs>